five years and still talking, this is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hey everybody, I'm Alex Bennett and this is The Ramble. It goes until midnight tonight, Eastern Daylight Time. Uh, and uh, uh, we got a guest as we usually have a guest. Uh, well, at least we got to have this guy on at least once a week. Ladies and gentlemen, out to the other coast of the United States of America, out to San Francisco, California, it's the musical stylings of Larry <laughs> Bubbles musical Brown. Style. Hello, Larry. Speaking of music, I saw our old friend uh, Dick Bright uh, last oh, week. Oh, you know, I, I you know who stayed here? Uh, Buddy Love stayed here for oh, like cool. uh, oh, I don't know about four days, five days, and uh, we I talked to him about Dick Bright and said, "How's Dick Bright doing?" You know, he's always in a good mood. It's, uh, yeah, and uh, Bobby Slayton was in, so it was a fun night. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, Bobby. It was at the Throckmorton. And, Managed to walk five people, but that's. <laughs> did he? Did he really walk five people? <laughs> of course. He, well, they're very PC over there. So, <laughs> you know, I, I, political correctness is you really getting to me. Oh, you it's know, killing us! It, it's like a form of bragging rights or something. Like, oh, well, I I got you on that, boy. You know, uh, and I just I you know it's it's a gotcha situation. And um, I, you know, I watched uh, uh, Dave Chappelle has a special on uh, on Netflix. Several of them, and Marjorie was watching all of them, including the latest one. And the thing I love about Chappelle is he works without a net. You know, he's dangerous because he's so un PC. It's ridiculous, and he gets away with it. Well, that's what I've heard. He's getting some blowback now, so I want to see this last one. But I heard it's great. Well, I mean, his blowback is, I mean, like he said, you know, uh, the Michael Jackson documentary, his line was, uh, what was it? Uh, what was the line? He says, I don't like HBO um, uh, kid fucking me in the ear. Something like that. <laughs> And he said, I don't believe these guys. You know, and then he went on with the whole thing. You know, he goes, what's the worst of this whole thing? You go to school the next day, they say, what did you do this weekend? And I said, guess what? Michael Jackson blew me. <laughs> you know. <laughs> you know, but I mean, he does stuff like that, and it's dangerous. I mean, a couple of, uh, a couple of uh, shows back, he actually kind of came to the defense of Bill Cosby. He said, you know, yes, Bill Cosby probably raped, like, let's just say it was 24 women instead of 55. Okay, let, let's just say that, that a bunch <laughs> of them were lying and it's only 24. He says, that's bad enough. He says, but then you got to remember all the things that, you know, Bill Cosby did, that he was the first black man to ever star in a network television show, you know, that he he had uh, the highest rated TV show and it was uh, run by a black man, that he had people on staff to keep him apprised of what was good for the black community and not good for the black community in comedy. I mean, he went on and on with, and he says, and then there, of course, the twenty million dollars worth of scholarships he gave out, and this and that, and blah 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 blah. And his last line is something to the effect of, you know, sometimes you got to take the good with the bad. You know that, that, that you know, should we forgive him for it? Eh, well, look at all that he's done. You know, I mean, none of that was presented in the court case about what a what a. Per uh, uh, paragon of uh, the community he was, you know. But that was in Chappelle's act. I mean, Chappelle works dangerously, and I think he gets away with it because he is so likable on stage that you will put up with almost anything from him. 
And I didn't notice anybody walk out on him. That's amazing. What did they walk out on Bobby for? Do you remember what the particular routine was or whatever? I think he used the word faggot, but he didn't mean... <laughs> but he was... Uh, he said the real definition of faggot is something... <laughs> it's about a, a man that will... A man whose wife won't let him play golf. <laughs> <laughs> now that's a funny line. Yeah, so that got to that. I think two people walk on that one. And you got to three more later. But, well, you know. I'll, I'll tell you, he's in good company because when I was a kid, I went to see Lenny Bruce at the Masonic Auditorium. Oh, you saw him? Wow. Yeah. And uh, I remember at least 20 people walking out on him. You know, so if somebody isn't walking out on you, you're on, you aren't doing your job in comedy. That's my feeling about it. Well, unfortunately, where it's going, it's going to be uh, maybe they'll start arresting comics like they did Lenny Bruce, you know? Well, I mean, they already are in a way. I mean, what happened to Louis C.K. if that isn't being yeah, arrested? Like ruined his career. Ruined his career. And only because he was in the first wave of the Me Too stuff. If he was like in the twentieth wave, he would have he'd be working right now, you know. But everybody, everybody was ready to rush to judgment with him, you know, um, rush to judgment and say, "Hey, you know, uh, this guy is automatically guilty." I mean, he's never been tried in a court of law, you know. And uh, uh, I, I feel so sorry for Louis C.K. You know, it, it always bothers me. Because he is such a genius as a comic, and uh, and I don't use that term genius lightly. Um, you know, he really did his. Uh, he he was terrific. So, well, I think uh, I think he may rise again. Well, he may rise again, but the the, you know, he was. Let's put it this way: he was on a roll. Okay. Doing all, producing all kinds of TV shows, uh, uh, becoming really a very basic, big time comic in this business, and all that has been cut short. Now maybe he'll make a comeback, but will it be as strong as he was before this happened? Yeah, and there'll always be the stigma. And... Yeah, there's the guy who pulled his penis out. So these guys are like the uh, the writers that were blacklisted in the fifties. <laughs> okay, like you're not a woman. I've noticed that, by the way. I don't uh, think so. You're not a woman. Okay, um, you're not a woman, and uh, so when I ask you this question, it's kind of different. But if you were in a room, and let's say Louis K said, "You don't mind if I pull my penis out," what would your reaction be? I just had the gross and walk out. Yeah. So why didn't the women do that? Why did, you know, he asked permission. You know, that's a gentleman. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he asked permission before he pulled his penis out. So shouldn't that give him some points for, you know, being a decent human being? You know, so I don't understand it. You know, I mean, I just... I just think that uh, they say, oh, well, they felt because he was a big-time comic that their uh, uh, their uh, uh, jobs would be at stake. No, they wouldn't be at stake. Maybe they were trying to curry his favor. But they're, you know, they're, they're comedians. Their job isn't at stake. You know, Louis C.K. isn't going to go to all the club owners and say, hey, don't, don't let her work here because she didn't want to see my penis. You know, so I mean, this whole idea that he had some kind of power over them—they wanted to please him. You know, they wanted to make mm -hmm. him happy because they thought that maybe there was something they could get out of him. So they didn't say, "Don't pull out your penis," or didn't get up and leave the room. And if they had gotten up and left the room, I don't think Louis C.K. would have held it against them. So I'm. So, so what's going to happen to him? Well, I hope that he comes back stronger than he ever did, but I don't believe that'll happen. I think that, you know, his career has been blunted completely by accusation. And he admitted that he did it. But, you know, at the time that he did I know he's a comedian. I know probably why he was doing it. You do, too. 
don't you? <laughs> no, I don't. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. I just think that, that comedians constantly are trying to be funny. And to him, that was funny. You know? Okay. To me, it's just such an odd thing to do. But uh, you, know, yeah. you and I wouldn't do it. And I'm not ashamed of my penis, by the way, but I wouldn't do it. Maybe he's ashamed of his, and he did do it. I don't, I don't know. But, you know, I mean, nothing you or I would do, but is it that horrible? I mean, considering that he prefaced it with, do you mind if I pull out my penis? And then you just say, yes, I do, and I think I'll leave. And then you get up and you walk out. And the next day when you see him, you go, hi, Louie, and you start talking again. He's not going to hold it against you. Right. But you're, well, try you're trying to curry his favor. So aren't you being kind of a whore by saying, go ahead, do it? Yeah. So, you know. Well, I'm curious. Do you remember? I can't believe you actually saw Lenny Bruce. That's uh, crazy. Yeah, I, I vaguely uh, do, remember. Do you remember I, what people were walking out on that he said? No, no. I was in my teens. Did, and you, I, did and, you find it funny? Oh, I enjoyed it. Yeah, I definitely okay. enjoyed it. I was a big fan of Lenny Bruce's, so I was ready to enjoy myself. Um, but I was maybe 17 at the time, around then. And uh, these people walked out. I can't remember why they walked out. It might have been some racial thing he was doing. And they might have been black. I don't know. I don't remember. But my feeling is if you don't get people to walk out on you, many times you're just not doing your job. <laughs> you know, I mean, do you think Bobby is bothered by people walking out on him? How many people walked out on him in the history of his co comedy career? Enough to fill probably a stadium. Mm-hmm. <laughs> And he never gets upset. It's great. Well, of course, he, there's no reason to get upset. You know, you made a point. You 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 made a, you know, you made a point. You know, so, I mean, uh, if they were bothered by it, fine. That's what Bobby does for a living. Bobby's not a safe comic. I mean, I, would, I haven't talked to Bobby in a while, and if I had to interview him right now, I'd probably say, have you adapted your act to the new some of the new uh, paradigms, you know? And he would probably say, yes, you know, there's certain things he won't do now that he would have done five years ago, you know? But uh, then again, I don't think he ever plays it completely safe. He's never been known as a safe comic. He's never been known as somebody, who, I mean, I named him the pit bull of comedy and it was with good reason, you know, it was his, his attack approach on comedy. Yeah, he was. This shows you how long it goes back. As I saw him before I started, and I saw him here in 1980. And the PC thing was around then, not to the extent it is now. But he blew me away when I saw him. I couldn't believe what he was saying. I thought he was so great. I don't know if the PC thing was that big. I mean, uh, you no, know, definitely not that big. But it was starting. It was starting to creep in. Today is a terrible time for comedians. I know comedians, for instance, who will not play colleges. Uh, because he, uh, Seinfeld they, won't play colleges. Yeah. That's how bad it's gotten. And he doesn't have an act that's dangerous. <laughs> who would he offend? Yeah, I mean, he, his TV show was always dirtier than his act was. I know. <laughs> Right? That's true. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and, and everybody, squeaky clean. Huh? Oh, squeaky. Uh, no, squeaky the, clean. Never a four-letter word. Never a lewd comment or sec vague sexual reference. You know. Uh, and he took great pride in that. That was his way of doing business, you know. That that was what his act was. It wasn't that he did it on purpose, I think, to make it family-friendly. I think he did it because he comes from an old tradition of comedy. I mean, how funny was Jack Benny? And you can't, Jack Benny was never dirty, you know? There was never any joke that was ever even remotely on the bluish side. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, most of the older comics, Dr. Mortsall and uh, they, even Groucho Marx, they did not like comics that were blue. Although they would go to the Friars Club and do a roast, and that's where they, their blueness came out. 
<laughs> after it came out. <laughs> you know, I mean, it was it was uh, terribly blue. <laughs> but they 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 felt that they were among friends and they could do it there, you know. So always work clean. Well, you don't. Uh, well, I'm at the Friars Club and I have to keep my membership. Uh, you know, uh, that's what I hate about those roasts that they do on Comedy Central. Is they they, you know, they they started doing. They originally did them as Friars Club roasts, and um, they they made everybody work clean. Well, that wasn't the spirit of a Friars Club roast. The spirit. They didn't call it a roast because it was a slight slight bake off. You know. Mm-hmm. It was a roast because you went in and you just went for blood, as it were. So, I don't know. You know, um, I just think that the political correct thing is just ridiculous. But if Bobby doesn't walk him, Bobby ain't doing his job. You know. So where does it, does this PC thing get even more? Is it going to strangle us more? Does it swing back the other way? Uh, I think it's only going to get worse. That's what I think, too. My friends, oh, it's going to come back. And I said, I'm not sure. No, it's not going to swing the other way, you know. Uh, you, you have to be, you can't make jokes about women anymore, you know. I mean, the days of my wife so fat is uh, is gone, you know. By the way, I, I have my comedy killer. Uh, ask me, uh, uh, I'm going to say, you reply when I say this. My wife is so fat. How fat is she? So fat that her doctor told her if she doesn't lose weight, she's probably going to have a cardiac and die. <laughs> funny. That's actually funny because it isn't funny. <laughs> <laughs> but that's my politically correct version of that joke now. You know. Um, <laughs> Well, think of the uh, think of the great un PC comics we've had. I wonder, like, if Sam Kinison were alive today, what would he be? <laughs> oh, Sam Kinison, to begin with, would probably be accused of, you know, patting women on the ass and things like that. Uh, but more than that, uh, I mean, think of think of Don Rickles. All right, I mean, I, he died at the right time. Okay, you know. Because if he had stuck around, I don't think he could have even survived this on stage. You know, there would always be somebody in the audience yelling out, you know, um, you know, that you're, you're in bad taste. You're, that's terrible. And walk out. And I'm sure Brickles walked a lot of people in his time. Uh, Chappelle talks about the fact that he was on stage, and he said this in two of his specials, so apparently it had some meaning to him, supposedly it happened at the punchline, that he was, I don't know, he was doing something, and some woman immediately got him and said, that's not funny, you know. You're not a woman. You don't know what that's about, you know. And he said, listen, ma'am, I understand your pain, that you may have had an event in which a man took advantage of you, but it wasn't me. <laughs> and that's the point. It wasn't him. Yeah, exactly. You know, and people, these women who go, oh, and, you know, and I was molested as a child and blah, 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 blah. You know, a lot of this stuff, a lot of the, uh, the I was molested as a child stuff, and I, I don't wish to be cruel towards people who were genuinely molested as children. Um, but uh, the, the people who were molested as children, a lot of that is not repressed memory, but enforced memory. That for instance, remember that big school where they said all these people raped them at this day school? The McMartin School. McMartin Preschool, right. In the end, I think nobody got convicted there. because yeah, I it think was, nothing happened there. It was found that it was all enforced memory. The, mm-hmm. the way in which the questions were asked and the way in which the kids were prepared to t- answer that question made them feel that they had been even though they hadn't been um so a lot of times it's not repressed memory it's enforced memory somebody along the line said uh you were oh, I, I i'll give you a great story there was this woman i had, hadn't seen for a while uh and 
God, she was a great fuck. So I was so glad to <laughs> see her again. But she had put on a few pounds, but I figured, nah, the suction still is good, I'm sure. <laughs> and <laughs> Has a lot any PSI. <laughs> yeah, a lot, a lot, lots of PSI. <laughs> Uh, as opposed to PSA, um, uh, uh, a lot of PSI, uh, and and so I figured out, I'll go back to her place with her, and she said, you know, since I've seen you last, I realized that I was molested as a child. I said, oh, that was terrible to hear. She says, yeah, and that's what it, it probably is, it gives for some of my behavior sexually, and I went. Well, then I guess molestation isn't that bad. <laughs> uh, uh, because she was terrific in the sack, and she was, you know, it was like a, I was like I was in a porno film with her, okay? You know. Uh, but anyway, she at some point says to me, but you know, you were probably molested as a child, but you don't know it. And I went, what? She says, yeah, you were molested as a child. I said, Never, never. My father would never molest me. My mother would never molest me. I had uncles, you know, uh, that, uh, that, that that never tried to molest me. She says, "Oh, I'm sure you were molested as a child." And that, and that bothered me. It bothered me because I didn't like have, having somebody trying to retroactively uh, state how my childhood went. You know, when right. I had great parents and I had great relatives and I don't remember anybody touching me inappropriately. I think I had this one uncle who used to like to wrestle with me, but I thought that was fun. He never touched me or anything mm. like that. But outside of that, uh, I, uh, you know, so when she tried to enforce it on I me, mean, I said to myself, I wonder if she really was molested as a child or just had somebody enforce this memory upon her. So, you know. Well, that's, yeah, and, and kids can be, I watch these crime programs, uh, many times people have murdered, people have been convicted of murder because of kids' testimony, and the, uh, the cops question them, they'll pretty much come around and say whatever the cops want them to say after a while. Well, the same thing that you say that, like, uh, the kids will let a person molest them because they're, they're, they're adult figures, and so they have power over them. So does a policeman asking them questions. Yeah, and trying to get it, and the policeman wants a certain answer out of the kid because he wants the collar and he wants to make the arrest, you know. So there's there's an advantage to him getting uh, a, a confession out of this kid that will incriminate somebody else, and that's what happened exactly at the McMartin preschool. They found that nothing, I think, went on at the McMartin preschool. There might have been one person in that they found might have had something to do with that. But that, on the whole, these kids were never molested, and this was enforced memory. Uh, and and look at what it did to those people. Look how it ruined their lives. Oh, you're totally ruined after that. Because they were falsely accused. You know, there was a movie years ago. It was a play by Lillian Hellman. The movie never could quite, in those days, say what it was about. But it is about two teachers who live with each other who are then accused by one of their students of being having a lesbian relationship. In the movie, they made it different. Uh, I can't remember how. Because in those days, you couldn't bring that up. But the play that Hellman wrote was all about a, a lesbian relationship uh, that was made worse by the fact that they were accused by a student of it. You know. Uh, and we have a lot of these enforced memories that that, that play in uh, the uh, I I into these things, and I just I you know we're we're just in a terrible time right now. Of I re I remember the McCarthy era. This reminds me of the McCarthy era, you know. Yeah, just uh, uh, very humorless. Well, also sheer accusation. Okay, yeah. accusation is the same as a conviction. Yeah. I mean, I'm glad that I'm, you know, I'm, I'm glad that I'm not, uh, uh, how can I put it, that I'm not around today as a big name. Because somebody somebody might accuse me, in spite of the fact that I think I've had an unquestionably good life that way, that I, mm -hmm. I never took advantage of a woman. 
But, you know, there's always a woman out there who will interpret my relationship with her in that way or in retrospect because now she wants to be part of the Me Too movement, you know. Right. I can't think of anybody that would accuse me of that. But I'm sure there's somebody out there who would. Okay. And if someone did, you'd be fucked. Yeah, I'd be fucked. Hey, listen, bubs. We, On that happy note. <laughs> that, ha- that happy note. You know. Always great talking to you, my friend. You too, buddy. Okay. Five years and still talking. This is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Yeehaw. Ah, oh, well. Thanks, bubs. Always love talking to bubs. Um, okay. Uh, so we're going to get ready to do our show. I'm not going to. Uh, I'm going to uh, do a little talking here first because I have some stuff to say. Because I, I was really bothered today by something. Let me, let me tell you, I I'm going to stop ordering stuff from Amazon. Uh, and the reason is is that at least once out of every five times I get agita because they just don't make good on their delivery or something is wrong or. You know, it's it's just they make more mistakes now than they ever have, and I really don't need to uh, to deal with that. So you know, but anyway, let me show you what happened. I what I did is I have a, a Mac Pro. It's an old Mac Pro. It was from uh, 2010, and I found that you can use Mojave on it, which is the new operating system. Uh, and you can actually upgrade the, just by upgrading the graphics card. So I decided to order a new graphics card for that machine that I could put in it and then upgrade it. And uh, that machine, by the way, is upgradable in a lot of different ways. I mean, you can add mem- more memory to it. You can, you can change out the uh, processors. Uh, you can bring a Mac Pro up to almost state-of-the-art, okay, because it was this... Um, big metal thing that was everything was interchangeable in it okay so i decided to uh, do a new graphics card so i ordered a graphics card and a strap to go with it and uh, they said it'll be here on uh, thursday so it's thursday and uh, i don't leave the house because part of the problem we have here in this apartment house is that deliveries don't get to us and here's why they don't get to us because some guys are really lazy and they don't they see all these buttons they have to push and they can't figure out which one and then you just go we tried to deliver it but you weren't home so i like to make sure i'm here so if they ring up they have no excuse why they don't bring me my package all right so i waited around all day for this package uh only to have this happen can you read that now expected September 6th to September 7th. We're sorry your package is late. We're working with the carrier to get your package back on track, and we'll let you know when your package is out for delivery. Please come back Sunday if you don't have it, and we'll help you out. Yeah, I waited around all day for your fucking package, and, and uh, I just, I, so I called them, all right? So I called them to see what uh, they could do about it, all right? Uh, And they said, well, nothing. We we don't know. The package is still out in New Jersey. Uh, There's problems with the storm. Just bullshit, okay? Uh, And uh, I I just went, well, that's that's the way it goes, I guess. You know, and I I yelled at them and screamed at them, and they said, do you want a refund? Uh, Do you want this? Do you want that? You know? And, but it says, arriving September 5th uh, to September, oh, excuse me, arriving September 5th, that's today, right, to September 6th, and yet, the, uh, that's, what it, uh, well, that's what it says uh, here, okay, if you notice right down there, at the, uh, uh, right in, in that area there, see, it says, now it says, arriving September 5th to September 6th, but if you go to the track package, uh, it says uh, September 6th to September 2nd, 7th. Okay, so, I mean, which is it? I have no idea. But anyway, it says uh, arriving September 5th to September 6th, and tomorrow is September 6th, so I guess I'll have it tomorrow. Now, here was one that was, uh, oh, it's finally been delivered, but I'll bet it isn't even here. I bet it's down in the... Uh, uh, down in the uh, uh, the lobby, 
okay? And I'm not gonna run down there now to the lobby, but here we go. Will it say that it has arrived? Oh, delivered, okay. Where was it delivered to, all right? Uh, and that didn't get here. That was supposed to be here by nine o'clock, didn't get here till at least probably about 10, 15, 10, 30. It's a thing for my foot. And right now I could be using that thing on my foot and uh, feeling better. And I bet they left it downstairs. I bet they left it in the lobby. So anyway, this kind of stuff has just been driving me up a wall, okay? Uh, call me an idiot, call me a moron for getting all upset by it, but I'm upset by it, okay? So now I have to go downstairs later and find my foot roller, which I could be using right now to make my foot feel better. I, I am not, I'm gonna stop ordering from Amazon. I think that I can probably order from a lot of other places and get almost the same deal, okay, on a lot of stuff. Uh, and I often found that with electronics, which is the thing I am of want to buy, uh, I can usually go to uh, Best Buy and I can show them the price that they're charging for the particular item at, um, at Amazon and then they'll meet that price, okay? So um, um, uh, uh, I, I, maybe I'm gonna start doing that. I'm gonna start, I'm gonna start shopping locally and try and give business to local merchants rather than the fucking Amazon, uh, which is, you know, run by a right-wing asshole anyway. So, who cares? Uh, anyway, that that's that's you know so it, that bothered me, and I, I so badly that I didn't feel like going on the air tonight. You know, uh, I felt that it was just it was it, it just, and this happens too often, and it always upsets me, and it upsets me. Simply because, hey, I ordered something. I gave you how many dollars worth of my money, all right? Uh, and you say it's going to be here on a certain day. You're running a business. I expect you to get it to me. Now, this thing, by the way, let me mention this package that I'm waiting for that didn't get delivered today was sitting over in Secaucus, New Jersey all day. It got in there around whatever in Secaucus, New Jersey. Secaucus is only maybe 25 miles away. Why couldn't they deliver it? You know, so, and then when you call Amazon, you get somebody who in most cases you can't understand, you know, because they're not here. So I called back tonight and I said, let me talk to somebody in the United States. And they said, okay, uh, wait a moment. So obviously, I wasn't talking to somebody in the United States. And uh, that, uh, that really got to me, you know. So anyway, you there, Phil? Phil, your mic isn't on. Huh? Or I don't know. Oh, I know what, I know what the problem is. I have the wrong pot up here. There we go. All right. Okay, let me see here. It's Phil. Let me, let me, uh, let me uh, give him a slot here so that he can be seen by the people out there uh, yeah but i i'm i'm just getting kind of sick of um of, can't you uh i'm getting some slap back is that you no, or me I'm not, that's you uh, okay uh can't you take your iphone and still continue to broadcast and go to a trip down to the lobby no and get your package no and keep on the air no oh okay because i thought you were able to walk around the apartment with the iPhone. i am able to but I am not able to. Uh, let me see here. There's, uh, and we got to get Josh in here. Let me see here. Uh, bum, bum, bum. Let me see here. Cancel. Um, no, I can't because I have to have a Wi-Fi signal in order oh. to do that. Okay. You and can't I use the LTE. N no, I don't have. A, I don't. I, it's, it's not. A, it's not sent by phone. Okay. Ah, okay. Uh, if it were, I would. I'd do that. That would be fun. Okay, you know, be a little, little, little journey you, you could take. Hello, everybody. Everybody's there now. Hi. Um, oh. But uh, uh, you know, these assholes. I mean, it just—it's just terrible. Service is horrible today. And I guess Amazon was one of those companies that I used to rely on. But lately, I've had a lot of really agitated producing situations with them. 
you know. Is it Amazon or is it just the delivery guy? You know, because no, these delivery no, guys, no. Uh, I find my packages down the hall. I find it in the lobby. Well, well, that's, that's that's part of the problem. Okay, yeah. I agree with you. That's part of the problem. But nevertheless, I feel that part of the business they're doing has to do with um, uh, delivery. See, the part of the business they're doing is delivery. And if, if the deliveries aren't happening well and aren't happening like they should, then uh, uh, they, they should take responsibility for that and make sure that their vendors do the job they're supposed to be doing. And they're not doing the job they're supposed to be doing. Hi, Just Jeff. think when they yeah. start delivering by drone, <laughs> you're going to have to go to the roof. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I, uh, we used to have a sign downstairs. It said to all delivery people, all delivery people, please deliver the packages to the apartments. Do not yeah. leave them in the lobby. They left more of them in the lobby after we put that sign up than before we had them in the <laughs> lobby. Right? Yeah. You know, and, and quite frankly, that really, uh, that, uh, that really bothers me because we have a lobby, and, and while... Uh, Harlem is a lot safer than it used to be. There are still people who remember how to steal, you know? No. no. Uh, who, who the hell is this? So. I have no idea who this is. Hold on a second. <laughs> Hello, who is this It's calling? Who's this It's calling? Oh. Uh -uh. <laughs> it's your mom, bitch. Huh? Hey, <laughs> I just heard you complaining about your Amazon. Oh, that's you. I see. That's you. Okay. Turn up hold your on. Mic hold, hold, hold. Turn up your mic. We can't hear you much. Like I said, I just uh, heard you complaining about your Amazon. Mm -hmm. Your problem is you live in a big city. If you lived out here in the damn country like I do, mm -hmm. the cows would take your packages. Well, the cows would take my packages. Well, uh, you know, I they mean, it would cause more I greenhouse gas. Back for me. Uh, no. Okay. No. Uh, All right. No, but, uh, you know, I mean, uh, what bothers me is, hey, you tell me you're going to deliver on. It, why didn't they? They must have had some indication earlier in the day that this would be a problem because the thing never moved out of the uh, where it was shipped to, okay, in Secaucus, New Jersey. And they could have early said, sorry, your package won't get there today. And then I, w you know, I waited around because I wanted to make sure I got it. Got it. Why didn't they? Yeah. Wow. They wow. Wait a minute. Around. Wait a minute. We've got some. Now we've got some kind of sound coming back at us. Hold on. Okay. I'll be turning that down a little bit. Oh, it was, uh, it was, it was, well, was that you? Well, okay. I feel your pain, Alex. Uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> you know, my big issue is we have cluster mailboxes on my street. Mm-hmm. You know, and. You, me, we are of a of a time period when the mailman used to come to your door, right? Right. And put your mail in a box, you slip it through the door, and I get pissed off every day about having to walk a half a block <laughs> to get my goddamn mail, which is usually just bills and circulars anyway. Yeah. And I am just about at the and point where uh, uh, I am old enough to start saying to the kids in my neighborhood, get the hell off of my goddamn lawn. Hmm. Well, that's is, is another you, problem altogether. That's you, becoming, uh, an, uh, that's you becoming an old fart. <laughs> but what? Yeah, yes, uh, Josh, Josh. Is your stuff being brought by Amazon there yet, or is it still... Are they still using third party? Because like where I live, we're in one of the areas that was one of the first to get. We're full out Amazon all the way. In other words, it's their own people. I mean, it's an Amazon Prime van, and because uh, I only live maybe, I mean, a mile or so from the end of the runway to a, like a former Air Force base. Mm -hmm. uh, that's now a cargo airport, so they're even flying the Amazon Prime planes in there now. They just built a bunch of warehouses not too far from the house. So we're Amazon from start to finish, but are you still like FedEx and UPS? Oh, we're, we're uh, I think we're um, uh, Uber, I think, delivers here. No, um, 
I we do. We, 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 no, we, I have, I've, ha I've had to actually make a deal with uh, them saying I do not want FedEx or USPS. I said, yeah, oh, yeah. don't deliver. They said, okay, we'll put down here a note. We'll only send it by UPS. Yeah. So every now and then they send it by laser ship, <laughs> which is. You're going to get. You're hmm? going to get to the point where you'll only be able to get it by carrier pigeon. There is something yeah. you're getting some kind of feedback, Phil, when you talk. I am. Yeah. Uh, all right. Yeah. Well, that's just like, but here, because it's done by Amazon themselves, you know, there's no third party anymore. Uh, we actually get like two things that you you get with that is one, they're truly seven days a week. They even deliver on Sunday. They even brought they brought my wife. Oh, they, they, they deliver they li deliver on Sundays now too. Here. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So they they even brought her package on Labor Day. And then the the other thing is is she has the the app on her phone and it actually tells her where her package is at, and it's even like a little dot on a map, a little GPS, and then you even get an alert. You can set it for how long you want. I think like five stops away, ten stops away. She'll even get an alert that says you know like your delivery is. You're, you're five stops away, and then, you know, she always knows right when to go downstairs and wait for the package or whatever, just, you know, so just so it won't get well, taken Well, I off usually get away. messages when it arrives, but to show you how Apple just fucked up this time, I've gotten no message that that package <laughs> arrived. Yeah. You know, I mean... Yeah, I mean... Uh, look, I, I, I'm sympathetic to yeah. them if they're having some problems with their deliveries right now because of the hurricane, although there's no hurricane here, Okay. But it could affect, you know, a bunch of things. I uh, think it's the volume of deliveries that they have now. Uh, a few years ago, uh, the delivery was always spot on. Now, I, I still hear something in the I, background. I don't know. You've got a problem, Phil. I'll, I'll call back. Well, don't, no, it's calling back isn't going to change it. You've got something turned up. No, there's nothing turned up. Well, uh, speakers are off. Well, it the sounds okay. It sounds, off. it sounds fine now. Oh, all right. You know. Um, okay. Everything is off. Yeah. Uh, where, where, where was I going with this? Uh, you know, I, I get a little tired, by the way, of, of having to deal with people's technical problems. If you're having technical problems, unless it's affecting us, please deal with it. And don't, you know, like last night I had Ray all playing with stuff and everything, and it was, hello, hello, can you hear me, you know. And uh, I, it, I'm getting a little exhausted with that. This is technology. It fucks up. Yes, J uh, Jack. Jack. Let me just jump in here while this is totally fascinating. Mm -hmm. I've got to get ready for my show, and uh, i got to go rub my cat for a little while. So, uh, no, wait a minute. Wait, uh, is, that a, is, that a you, you... is that a euphemism <laughs> for something? Is that a euphemism <laughs> for something, rubbing your cat? <laughs> <laughs> my, my cat had surgery today. Oh, oh. I'm sorry. What? Oh. You, really? He needs fifteen hundred dollars. And nothing says loving like a little bit of rubbing. Oh, wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. How much? Hey, Jack, did, how, how much? Fifteen hundred the... bucks today. Look, I'll catch you for the intersection. Wait, wait, wait a minute. Well, hold on a second. Hold on. Hold on a second, Jack. Show, Jack. Okay? Hold on. Can you hear me, Jack? Jack? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? How much? How much? Did it, Did it cost to take care of your cat of today? Your cat. Oh, about five hundred dollars. Okay, that's okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I know somebody who loves my cat for less. Anyway, uh, I'm getting slapped back. I know. Uh, Phil, stop it! <laughs> All right, here. fuck it. You know, uh, uh, stop it. Uh, he, it was. I think it's Jack. I think Jack was having a problem there. Okay, so, you know. Um, anyway. Um, are you getting it now, Phil? I don't think you are. Well, he can't even hear us. So. It went away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That freaking Jack Bishop. Hmm? <laughs> it was that freaking Jack Bishop. That freaking Jack Bishop, yeah. Anyway, um, so, no, Phil, you can come back now, Phil. You know, Ooh, I, don't think you, I don't think you'll hear it. I think it was something that had to do with Jack. Uh, you know. But I, it's just I'm not in a good mood tonight because of this whole thing. And uh, uh, so I get a little irritated with just p pure little technical problems, which, you know, if you got them, deal with them. But don't, don't, <clears throat> you don't interrupt the show by going, can you hear me? Can you hear me? You know, 
it just throws everything off. I thought it was me, and I thought no, it was a it problem, wasn't you. and I it, was going to get off and no, go back on. It wasn't you. Oh. It was Jack. Yeah. It's always Jack. Jack. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Last night he was having prob problems with his uh, uh, with his Skype, and um, he had to go on late because he couldn't get his Skype going. And then it turned out he didn't have, for some reason, he was launching an old Skype, not a new <laughs> Skype. So I had him go online and download it, and now everything's supposedly working fine. But, uh, you know, Jack, Jack is, uh, he's technically challenged, so I have to see him through this stuff. Yeah. Uh, but You're such a good friend. Anyway. <laughs> so anyway, I'm exhausted from that whole thing with, with, with uh, Amazon, and I'm tired of it happening. This isn't, you know, lately they seem to be getting worse and worse and worse and worse. And my feeling is, hey, you know, if I can, if I can give a few bucks to Best Buy, which is at least local, the people here work in the Best Buy and make a living working there, then I would rather spend my money at Best Buy than at Amazon. Well, the Amazon so, could have been local, but AOC made no, sure that, that, that wasn't happen. that wouldn't have made it local. It no. just would have made it a big, you know. People's expectations are getting, uh, uh, I, I think they're not realistic. You know, we, we got spoiled there for a while with uh, next day, same day, two hour. Uh, I, I just don't think that uh, uh, they can maintain not, that I'll level of service. I'll tell you what I'm spoiled by, Phil. I'm spoiled by when I was a kid. You had a guy down the street who had a local store, and you dealt with him. And if he said he was going to make a delivery at 3 o'clock, he made a delivery at 3 o'clock. Okay, all that personal part of business is gone. You're That's just due to the big boxes. Well, I yeah. wouldn't even blame the big boxes. At least the big boxes, if you think about it, the big boxes were uh, uh, stores that uh, were local and employed local people. You know, uh, this yeah, thing, I, this thing is like a giant behemoth that just roll. In fact, I read a thing today where Amazon deliveries are causing accidents. Because Amazon has put so much pressure on these companies like UPS to get packages there on time, okay? That you know, and I don't mind it. Listen, if they said to me it's going to take five days for you to get this, I go, okay, I'll wait five days to get it. But if you say you're going to get it to me in five days, then get it to me in five days. And if you say you're going to get it to me in two days, get it to me in two days. But don't create an expectation based on the fact that you're not going to force UPS drivers to endanger your other people's lives trying to make all these deliveries. You mentioned uh, Uber. Uh, I walk the dog uh, three to four times a day. Yeah. And uh, so I'm out there on the way to the park, and I see these Uber drivers pull up. They're reaching in the back of their car, and they're pulling out Amazon boxes and bringing them into the building. Uh, so even Uber drivers are wow. picking up a few extra bucks uh, delivering. Uh, yeah, You know, I, I sent you a book a while ago. I don't know if you read it. It was called Big Box Swindle. Mm -hmm. And uh, it had to do with uh, the big boxes and exactly what you're talking about, that um, retailers are being forced out of business. It was the old personal touch. For instance, they <coughs> cited uh, a toy store. Little Johnny's going to have a birthday. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, little Sally goes to the toy store with her mother, and she says, oh, let's get him this. And the toy store owner says, oh, no. Uh, uh, Mrs. Jones already got this for, for little Johnny. Why don't you get this? And th that's the, you know, you go to the meat market. You go to these things. Oh, I, I know what cut you like. And, and th that personal service, it's gone. Oh, it's, and it's oh. gone because of this kind of, uh, this kind of thing. And even, have you, have you gone to a meat market lately to buy meat? Uh, I have Whole Foods. That's well, Whole Foods. Whole them. Foods is not a meat market. I'm talking about a, bu a butcher. Hmm? Well, okay? they've got a butcher counter. No, no, I'm not talking about a butcher counter. I'm talking about a butcher, a guy whose job it is to be a butcher, and he runs this store being a butcher. I don't think I've been in a meat market like that in yeah. 30 well, years. Well, I d decided to do that about uh, half a year ago. You can't even buy good meat in those places anymore. <laughs> Wow. wow. You know, the, the beef is all, I, I, I don't think I know, remember the taste of good beef anymore, you know? Go to uh, Ruth's Chris. I don't want. Their beef is great. That's not a butcher, Phil. 
I'm talking well, about. I want to. I want to bring home a slab of meat, put it on the pan, fry it, and sit there and go. Ooh, ah, man, that's some really great eating. Fried meat. Oh yeah, that's really great. Pan fry meat. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh no, no not I, deep fry meat. I'm talking about pan fried. Pan fried. Meat. Yeah. No, I, I don't know. I, I, I have a pan with grill on it, with a grill on grilled. it, and it gets gives nice grill marks. You know. Yeah. Yeah. You paint those on? Yeah, but what I'm saying is, it, you just we, we live in such a depersonalized world that none yes. of this stuff is is there's no such idea as personalized service. You know, like right. I will have to admit, I mean, I got that free case of plus coffee from Amazon the other day because I thought they had sent me the wrong one, and then they sent me the right one, but it still looked like the wrong one until I pulled the box out and found out that Starbucks does a shitty job of packaging so that on one side, just one side of the box, it says Verona on it. And Starbucks I thought I was getting does, Verona. Hmm? Starbucks uh, doesn't make strong coffee anymore. Even if you go into the Starbucks, uh, and you and you get the coffee and you ask for like a French roast or a dark roast. Yeah. It's well, we don't have any. We'll we'll make you some. It'll be fifteen minutes. You know. Well, uh, I don't even go into Starbucks because yeah. I can't. I don't know the nomenclature at Starbucks. I mean, yeah. uh, please, I, have a, I, I, have I would just. Way. I would like a. I would like a. Uh, what? Uh, yeah. So. That, that's the Starbucks app. I know Marjorie and, has one. Uh, so what I do is I. Wow, you're the, the only one in America who has one. Yes, uh, I pick the store that I'm going to go into, yeah. I pre-order, mm -hmm. I prepay, I walk in, and it's waiting on the thing. So I don't have to do the nomenclature. All I have to do is press the no, button no, no, and uh, walk it, in. Do you know what I mean by nomenclature? Yeah, the uh, venti, yeah. grandi. Yeah. I, I don't go for that <clears throat> bullshit. Just give me a goddamn cup of dark black <laughs> coffee. Right. I asked for a large coffee the other day. Yeah. And the guy said, venti? I said, no, large. And so he said, uh, uh, venti, that's, that's our... He went I, I venti. Said, oh, that, that means 20. Oh, fuck, that, that means 20 in Italian. I said, I don't yeah. speak Italian. He says, neither do I. So I said, well, then Start give me a large English. coffee. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, and, and when it was all over, if you had tried to pay with cash, you'd have oh. fucked that guy's whole life up. He'd fucking be being there. <laughs> One day, I got to tell you, when I first moved to New York, I had sold... Um, of my car in California. And the person who bought it paid it for it in cash. So I had many thousands of dollars in cash. Okay? So I went in to buy a TV set at Best Buy. And when I go up uh, to the counter to pay for it. Uh, uh, the guy says, okay, you want this? And then he says to me, starts going into this, would you like the... Uh, would you like the uh, warranty on this? And blah, 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 blah. And they could break and do this. And I went, don't try to upsell me one more inch. Otherwise, I'm turning around and walking out of the store and you won't make the sale. He said, okay, well, let me take you down so you can pay for it. So they, I go in to pay for it and I start giving them cash. They didn't know what the fuck to do with it. <laughs> and this was, this was we're, not, we're talking 15 years ago. They didn't know what the fuck to do with cash. I'm yeah. handing them up. I said, here's your $1,000 in cash. And they went, wait a minute, I'll have to go get my manager. <laughs> Are you a drug dealer? <laughs> <laughs> you, you, oh, if you buy stuff with cash today, they think you are. Yeah. You know, I'll tell you the other thing that pisses me off, the bank. <clears throat> God, this is getting you sound like an old man show where we're complaining. <laughs> but the bank, now, you go to the bank to get some money out of the ATM. And if you don't ask them what denominations you want, let's say I take out $300, they give me 120s and the rest in 50s. I don't want any fucking 50s because every time I go into a store, they look at me like I'm a drug dealer. Yeah. You know, you would think $50 bills today wouldn't be anything to a store, but no, they hold it up to the light, they take a pen and they mark it, and they put it under a black light. You know, and I'm going, oh, I want... So I, 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 every time I go to the uh, the store, I just go no fifty bucks. I, I don't want the fifty dollar bills. Give me nothing but twenties. But you got to remember to tell the ATM that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah the ATMs in my area only give twenties. Really. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, stick around a while. They'll start paying out with the fifties. 
but your fifties are all kind of rolled up, and then they scrape the they scrape them with a razor blade and get all the powder off. Uh, <laughs> no, those are only hundred dollar bills, Phil. <laughs> Oh, well, you're a high class. You know know what they said a a couple of years ago? They said that most of the money in this country, if you were to test it, had traces of cocaine on it. Most bills, you know, like over $20 uh, had uh, this uh, stuff on it. So, you know. Um, Let me see here. Let me me put Kevin in here, a hog rider. Good to see you, Kevin. Nice to see you. Haven't seen you in a while. there he is. Okay, let me do a little transition there. And there he is. Hello, Kevin. Hey there. Yeah, so it's, you know, this whole thing with the $20 bills, I'm sorry. I uh, yeah, Move your camera down a little bit so we can see a little more of your body there, Kevin. There we go. Uh, yeah, oh, that, uh, yeah, so just, he's monitor. like me. He needs wide angle to see his body. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, I just, you know, I mean, I, 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 you know, I mean, all these things just starting to get to me. But I mean, what gets to me and most of all about about uh, Amazon is the agita they give me. And I explain to them, I wait around for your package. And then I pull this one. I go, and this was supposed to be a birthday present for somebody today. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Oh, boy. I mean. You bought him a, a foot roller for a birthday present? No, not a foot roller. It's not the foot roller I was waiting for. It oh, the, the, uh, the Apple thing? The, no, the, uh, the, uh, the uh, uh, graphics card. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what kind yeah. of screw are you that you're getting a graphics card for a birthday present? You know? <laughs> oh, I, 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 if somebody gave me a graphics card for a birthday present, and I would say thank you very much. Yeah, but they wouldn't. You wouldn't get laid. Well, this, uh, <laughs> this is because I'm trying to take my Mac Pro, my old Mac Pro, and upgrade it. Uh, and the fact is, you can take those old Mac Pros and upgrade them so they're almost as good as uh, any Mac that's out today. Yeah. You know. I hope to God this thing works. Otherwise, the rest of the next week is going to be. Uh... <laughs> yeah. Well, I have one of two machines I can put it in because I have an even older Mac Pro, and you can do it with those too. Mm. So you know. Anyway, uh, that so was. So you know that if you start to use Best Buy, about six months months from now, Amazon will buy them. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yes. <laughs> right. There, I think they they own the other half of the world that uh, Sherwin Williams doesn't own. So. <laughs> well, 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 they did buy they did buy Whole Foods, and as a result, a place that sold shitty food even sold shittier food. So you know, it's. Uh, um, yeah, they got more just, basic. It, 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 you know, I'm, I'm kind of surprised that. Oh, I'm sorry. I was going to say I was kind of surprised they haven't tried to buy Best Buy yet. You'd be honest. You know, I mean, their number one competitor probably. Yeah, for that. I don't. I don't know that they're. An, uh, oh. I don't know that they're a major competitor. To Amazon. I don't know that well, Amazon has any competitors. I think that's well, the big that, problem that's, with that's them. Pretty I mean, important. if they had more, uh, 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 if they had more uh, uh, competition. I think they would be a little more assiduous in the way they do business. But they don't. I mean, who do they have? I mean, you go to any one of these other places, and they, I, I, there was this one company called OWC, and I was going to get, I would, where I first saw this graphics card was on their site, and it was $369. So I went over to, App, uh, to Amazon to see how much it cost, and it was only like $189 or $179. And I wrote them and I said, "How come you're selling it for 369, and and Amazon is letting me have it for 179?" And they said, "Because they can buy a hundred thousand of these goddamn things, and we can only buy a hundred. And yeah. so, how are those smaller companies going to compete with Amazon? Well, you know, really a- can't. <laughs> Amazon is, is is a big bully, basically. I mean, if you're a company." You want to do business with Amazon, and if it yeah. if it's at the if it means you have to charge everybody more, you charge everybody more. Yeah. Well, that's that's the advantages of when you get that big. Yeah, you're right. No one can do anything about it. I mean, I work for a company that's worldwide and huge, and that's the way they are. I mean, and they they don't even try to hide their philosophy. Like when we deal with vendors, you know, because I'm in the procurement side now, you basically tell them like this is the deal. And if you don't like it, SW basically just says, too fucking bad. We'll buy from someone. I mean, 
you either take their terms or you get nothing. Well, I mean, see, I w- they're so yeah. big and they have so much money, you can't turn them down. You need Costco's their business. the same way. But I wish I had that. I wish I had that option. I wish I had the option to tell Amazon, hey, I've got other places I can go. Yeah. You know, at least here, like in New York now, uh, I just had Fios. Uh, my two-year thing was up with Fios. So they renewed all my discounts except for like one, so my bill went up $5 a month. Okay, I'll go along with that. But if I had suddenly noticed it would go up $50 a month, I call them up and say, hey, I want the deal I was getting. And when they say, well, we, you know, I don't know if we can do that, you go, you know, there is Spectrum in town. And I can simply go over to them, and this apartment was already wired by them once. It wouldn't be that much yeah. trouble for them to put it back in, and they have high-speed Internet and all of that, and the prices are very competitive. I can just go to them. So I've got a choice, okay, and I've got a bargaining chip with them. I don't have a bargaining chip with Amazon. Uh, I don't want to buy from Amazon. Who is there? You know? Yeah, there there's OWC, but they can't charge and pay give you stuff at those prices. The best thing I can do is is go to Best Buy whenever I can to buy a television, whatever I need that I would buy from Amazon that's electronic and and simply show them the price on Amazon and they'll give it to me for that price. Um and I would feel better about it. I'm, I'm getting feel bad about buying from Amazon all the time. I mean, you know, I don't mind buying a foot roller from them. They're not going to get rich off a fucking foot roller. Yeah. yeah. yeah every That's once in a while, those... you find something cheaper from, from Amazon. Even tonight, I was looking for, uh, my sister called me looking for shoes for my mother. Yeah. Some diabetic shoes. Yeah. And uh, she said, oh, I want you to buy them on Amazon because she doesn't do that shit. And so I looked them up. Mm-hmm. And the the shipping wasn't very good, so I said, you know, just check their website and see if you can get a little faster on the website. Well, it turns mm-hmm. out the original place where they were manufactured was twenty five bucks cheaper. Really? Yeah, twenty five yeah. bucks cheaper. Well, also, Amazon. also, how does a shoe? Ask answer me this, uh, Kevin, because I'm not aware of that. Uh, how does a shoe get diabetes? Uh, they eat too much, too many candy bars. I see. Okay, I was wondering yeah, how yeah. they got diabetic. I, I think that you don't want to bunch the toes up uh, because it can cause blisters. And you didn't move. get the joke, Phil. You didn't get it. <laughs> Phil went right over your head. Uh, I, I got the joke, but then I was giving the real. He answer, said he was going out is... to buy diabetic shoes, and I went, "How does a shoe get diabetes?" But um, bum. And I, I went right. I got, I, I got I, that. I ran right with him too, Phil. And, and I and I moved. Past it. <laughs> <laughs> well, we don't have we don't have too many people watching us tonight. Hmm. I was going to go the eating the shoe, di- you know, direction, but you know, I ran yeah. with you, Alex. Hey, listen, uh, this just came in on the news, and I think you might want to know this uh, because it's important. You know, we've been having some real weather problems, and the hurricane just hit Alabama. Yeah, I was down yeah. there. That's why I got stuck. I was waiting. What? You know, all the planes canceled. And, 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 <laughs> no, it, it, it hit North Carolina and South Carolina and Alabama. No, didn't you see? Sure tr- didn't you see Trump's map today? Did, oh, well, then it's that? true. Then it's true. Huh? They canceled all then those it must flights. Be true. Let me see if I can uh, if I can show people what we're talking about. Let me see. They here. canceled all the cruises out of Alabama. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. Well, you got the, 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 the Sharpie marker. Yeah, and uh, you know that was just a a, a, a an area of safety. Yeah. You put a nipple on that, too. Trump map. <laughs> let me see here. Um, let me see here. I've got a, a, I've got some video. Maybe I can run. Let me see here. What, what is this? Uh, hey, he broke federal law by doing that. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's what they said. Uh, let me see here. Um, uh, bu- 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 I don't want this to go. It was like six or eight tweets to try and get out of it. He still didn't. Let me see nah. here. Um <laughs> No, 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 that's not what I want. Stop it! Stop it! Stop it! Stop it! Stop it! No, I don't want that. Uh, hold on a second. Trump map, and then I'll just go to uh, Trump a weatherman. Video. Yeah, let me see here. <laughs> Maps, uh, news, images. It's okay. like all the other weather idiots. All right, here we yeah. go. <laughs> here, here, here we go. Come here. Well, wait a minute. Why? Why isn't that? I'm trying to. 
There you <laughs> and, go. Well, I'm trying to bring there it go. up. I'm trying to bring it up here, and I can't quite get it up. Uh, but uh, wait a minute. I can maybe I can just show you. Show him holding onto a tree, flying sideways. You see sideways. right, right up there. Uh, he, if you look closely, folks, I'm trying to. Let me see if I can find a better thing about a Trump map here for a second. I said I've got went to images, and here's the map, and maybe I can a just oh, here, here. here we can go go uh, uh, well there we go. <laughs> There we go. There we go. There we go. There, there, there is the map. See right over, over, look, over to the, over the head of the penis. There, he has taken a sharpie, and literally put in another area, um, which is ridiculous. Because <laughs> what, what he did actually here was, uh, oops, that's not what I want. Is he? Uh, he uh, he he wanted to try and prove because he had said something about Alabama was going to get hit, and everybody told him no, that's not true. Alabama is going to get hit, so he took that map and he added that sharpie thing. Oh, if you can see it, folks, over there. So uh, yeah, that wasn't the map like uh, hmm? days old too. Uh, uh, Twenty-four I, hours, something like that. Yeah, yeah, uh, really an idiot. Um, let me see here. Um, is there show any... all the tweets afterwards. Huh? Show uh, all the tweets afterwards, too. Yeah, well, I don't have those here. But uh, um, here he is. Uh, well, uh, that's, uh, that, I have him also here. Hold on a Probably second. not enough for screen. There, there we go. You can, if you can see, folks, over, I, I, unfortunately, my uh, cursor doesn't show up on this. Uh, no thanks. Stop all that. Okay, but there, there it is. But anyway, that was his. That was his thing. Uh, let me see here. Where are we? Um, okay, I just want to go back here. <laughs> anyway, that 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 was the uh, that was what was happening over there at uh, at. Uh, so Kevin will be the only one that probably gets it. If no one else watches football, they won't understand. But. So whose behavior is more bizarre than Donald Trump or uh, Antonio Brown's? You know, <laughs> pretty damn <laughs> like, close. Ex explain the joke. I don't <laughs> get it. Do the other. I don't get the joke. What's the joke? Well, it's not really a joke. There's just a football player that plays out there in Oakland, where he lives pretty close. Who's just like Antonio Brown's a, a fucking weirdo. I don't know really know how to describe him. <laughs> it's, it's, My neighbor's like over there yelling at his. President. My neighbor's over there yelling at his garage about every 15 minutes on that one. <laughs> I couldn't. Well, that's I couldn't care how often he does right. something stupid. So, yeah. <laughs> well, First he what, burns what his people foot are in a, saying, in a nitrogen tank. What, what they're saying is that Trump may have broken the law with that map, because what he did is he added something to it, which is phoning a weather map of a what would be called a disaster zone or a potential disaster zone, and that's illegal by law. Yes, they so. asked. They asked him where he got that, and he said, I don't know. So he didn't throw anybody under the bus. He just said, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. And <laughs> all, uh, no. How do you convict a guy on, on that? You can't prove that he was the one that had the Sharpie, you know, yeah. unless you do a DNA test on the Sharpie that's in his drawer and the one that's on the map. <laughs> well, admittedly, this, for the most part, is stupid and vicarious in discussing this whole matter. But he, he, he did have a black ink on his fingers. On his fingers, so, yeah. <laughs> There you go. I just, it, it would be so American, though, if after all the fucking shit that Donald Trump has done, if the thing that brings him down is drawn on a fucking weather. <laughs> that would be awesome. <laughs> I'm okay with that. Did you hear he ordered uh, weather planes to go in and get uh, redirect the tornado over Alabama? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. But anyway... Uh, no, in fact, he had said for a day, day before or something that there was going, Alabama was going to be threatened, and everybody said, "Oh no, it wasn't going to be." And then when this map showed up, somebody had sharpied in a new area. I mean, it's you know kind of like threaten? I would imagine that when they ask him, "How come you don't know too much stuff?" He went, "Well, the dog ate my homework." You know, you I know, mean, you know how they're going to threaten Alabama? How? Uh, they're going to say, here's a bar of soap. You better take a shower. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No more Ku Klux Klan meetings for you. Right. 
you know. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but uh, that was that was the big talking point of the day that everybody was uh, making a big deal about, and uh, you know, um, hey, anything you can say bad about them, I'm I'm all, I'm 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 part of the I'll pile on just like everybody else, you know. But you know, uh, I had uh, California yeah. has come up with a uh, a. Uh, check uh, in order to buy a background check in order to buy ammunition. Mm -hmm. So the law changed in July. So around the middle end of July, I went in, I paid the $19. They did the background check. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, 10 days later, I went in and I bought the ammo. Well, I used that ammo up. And so yesterday I went in to buy more ammo. Well, they did something instead of a basic ammunition check, they did a standard ammunition check. Well, the the what you have it? to What's you it? have to get a you have to get a background every 10 day, uh, every time you buy unless you registered a gun within the last 2 years. So, they're going to force people to buy guns in California if you want to be able to buy ammunition. So, uh now tonight. Well, wait a minute, wait, Phil, on... Phil. Before you go further, let me just ask yeah. you. I know it's a stupid question, but let me ask it anyway. Uh, if you don't have a gun, what the fuck do you need ammunition for? Well, they want <laughs> you to register the guns that you have. Oh, okay. So if you're not in the system with a registered gun, because yeah. I haven't bought a gun in 20 years, so uh, I had to go in. Uh, take one of my guns, go yeah. on the Department of Justice website, mm -hmm. pay another nineteen dollars, register it uh, as a uh, to my address because my driver's license and the address of where I bought those guns twenty some odd years it's ago is different. Yeah, yeah. So I was I was denied yesterday the opportunity to buy any ammo because the the things didn't match up. They said I didn't have a record in the in the DOJ system. So I had to go through all of this BS uh, and now wait until that gun shows up on my record and then I can go in and pay a dollar and buy ammo with them just looking at my driver's license. So mm -hmm. they're, they're making it uh, very, very difficult for law-abiding citizens to, to, to buy ammo, but they're also forcing people to go out and buy guns in order to buy ammo. So, well, I mean, I, you know... Until, we're not very smart with this whole thing, okay? You know, uh, and, and we haven't been all along. I mean, uh, I I see your your argument about that. On the other hand, my argument is, why the fuck do you need ammo? Why the fuck do you need a gun? So you know, we're back to square one. Well, I I like to shoot, you know, and uh, yeah, yeah, most well, Sundays uh, I go shooting. Oh, really? At least for two or three hours. For two or three hours? Yeah. How much does that cost you in ammunition? Uh, let's say you're spending 30 to 40 cents a round. I shoot 150, 200 rounds a week. Uh, it's, it's expensive. God, I can buy pot for cheaper. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, but um, now uh, Larry Ellison has some property. And I and I've been going up there. It's this. It's a mile and a half off the road, very clandestine, and uh, it is it is the coolest place uh, to shoot. And they, you know, you got the targets set up. Every, everything is there. Uh, if you know, you, you go there and you say, ah, I can't believe I'm I'm in a place not only so beautiful but uh, with uh, so so much stuff for shooting. Why does Larry Ellison have a shooting range? Uh, he has um, security that uh, travels with uh, him and his executives that his uh, that the government my, my buddy just got back from Africa yesterday mm -hmm. uh, and he was uh, uh, in a number of different countries in Africa doing the security for their detail yeah. and so they go up there and that's where they shoot um, in this uh, on this property yeah and uh, so he, he he's one of the guys that provides that you know there so when he gets to that country they give him guns they give him all sorts of stuff and then they provide the you yeah. know and 
not only that, the State Department demands it as well as uh, the insurance company. Mm-hmm. Well, it, it, by the way, how do you feel about this? Did you hear about San Francisco? Uh, uh, no, what? Oh, oh, they just uh, they passed a resolution in San oh, Francisco. Oh, NRA, I'm a criminal. That the NRA is a terrorist organization. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, I think that they're a terrorist organization. No, they, they, uh, now that's not the way to fight their argument. Okay, is well, no, I'm. They're not. They are. You are not them. No, they're yeah. they're poo poo head. Yeah, they're doo doo head. <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, no, I thought that that was kind of cool. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Well, as long as it remains a nuclear-free zone. No, that's Berkeley. No, oh, it could spread. I, I never understood that nuclear-free zone shit, okay? Yeah. Uh, because I'm sorry, if I'm the enemy, uh, let's say I'm North Korea, and I'm flying a plane over Northern Berkeley. California... Uh, uh, do I look down at the ground and then look at my co-pilot and go, now we better not drop a bomb there because that's a nuclear-free zone. <laughs> I think it's for driving uh, through with uh, yeah. nuclear stuff. But um, I, I thought of an idea that if I opened up a coffee shop in Berkeley, yeah. that my decaf coffee would be called nuclear-free coffee. Well, to begin so, with, you'd have to pronounce it correctly. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> it's nuclear Repeat it after me, Phil. Nuclear. 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 <laughs> Nuclear. Nuclear. No nukes. No nukes. You, you mook. Uh, <laughs> mook the nuke. Uh, uh, uh. Boy, I wish I had my roller right now because my feet are hurting me. See? Well, use the ball. Where, where, well, where's well, I've the got ball? the ball. I've got the ball here, but, you know. That's my thing is, this, this new ball. roller that Jeff uh, turned me on to. Thank you, Jeff. We appreciate it. What will happen, though, is I don't have to worry about the ball sliding out from under me and trying to keep the towel under it and all of that. I can just put the thing on the floor and just go back and forth, and it'll, uh, it'll just stay right in place. And I can do it during the whole show. And Oh, this ball feels I don't feels know where great. my ball is. Well, you know, you had that operation a, a while back, and maybe... They receive it rolled away. What were you saying, Jeff? I got a temporary approach. What? Here's what you get. Get a water. Put it in a freezer. Yeah. Get it cold. If, yeah. You have a, a seltzer bag or something like that. Mm -hmm. And just roll that on your foot. Oh, yeah, you could do it's that. It's very cold. Yeah, but uh, I'm sure the uh, it looks like my my thing is here. I just don't know if it's at the front door or whether it's downstairs. But it wasn't. And Marjorie. Well, I checked the front door just shortly before I came in here to start talking after while Bubbles was wrapping up, and it hadn't come to my front door. So it's probably down in the uh, downstairs. It's probably been stolen already by some local, you know. So, so um, you're you're in pain. And Jeff basically just told you to ice it and take an aspirin. I feel like he should charge you like fucking $500. Yeah. I'm a doctor. Yeah. I'm like a doctor. Well, do, do you take yeah. Medicare, Jeff? Yes. Okay. And I have, I, 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 I have a supplemental, too, that I'll give you the information on. You could, you could take one of these and freeze that baby. And, yeah. And I'll do the same job. Yeah, know? but it doesn't it, – what, what these things do, and you know from having used yours – is it, I, I'm using it, it right now. It kind of, yeah. You can. I could do it while I'm on the air. I'm doing it right now. Uh, I'm also jerking off at the same time. No. Um, <laughs> but uh, anyway, so I mean, it it, it does it, and it does make my. Uh, I was using this for a while back, and it was helping my feet a great deal, for the plantar's fasciitis or whatever that's called. But anyway. Um, what else is happening in the news? Anything? It's kind of been dull lately because all the news is about people uh, getting away from the storm, you know. And uh, I, I really felt sorry for the people in the Bahamas because, man, they were just decimated, decimated. You, we're all going to roll now with our balls? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we got our balls out. Hey, uh... <laughs> 
Wouldn't yeah. Do anything good. Uh, what was it? Uh, uh, the one of the cruise lines that goes to the Bahamas um, uh, gave a, a million dollars uh, to the people in the Freeport area. Yeah. And well, uh, I know the the group that I went uh, scuba diving with um, that comes out of Fort Lauderdale and then picks yeah. everybody up in, in Freeport. Mm -hmm. uh, they're they've loaded up their boat with supplies and they're making the 40 mile jog over to uh, the Bahamas to uh, to give people stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, uh, it, it's a sad it's a sad state of affairs. And uh, when you look at, you know, they, they show the, uh, they have drones that take videos, right? Yeah. And they fly over the damage, and you just go, wow, that's decimation. The only problem is they, they fly over an area that has been decimated. They don't f show you the complete picture. Did, was everything in the Bahamas like that, or just that place was so decimated in, that it was In that there? area, there's an island, starts with the letter A, Azor, Azar, or... Something like that, and then uh, Freeport, where I stayed the night before I got on the boat. Yeah, yeah, and uh, yeah, it's uh, it's pretty decimated. I mean, it, people don't have homes, uh, they don't have food. Uh, I was watching today; the uh, State Department was saying that they had a bunch of water that was going to expire, and they had more than they needed, and they're bringing it down to the Bahamas because they don't have water, they don't have food, they don't have anything. Anyway, uh, uh, in my life, uh, our trial begins in a couple of weeks. Ooh. Yeah. yeah. More money to spend on lawyers, you know. Um, They'll delay. Uh, I don't think they're going to delay, but who knows? But I wish they would delay before we have meeting, the meeting with our lawyers, you know. Yeah. Um, <laughs> no, they never do that. You know, and he's asking us to come up with all kinds of stuff and to you know, it, you know what's so funny about it is we're having the trial coming up, and I am going to be asked questions about what happened and all of that. It happened so long ago. You forgot. That I've forgotten a lot of stuff, you know? I mean, uh, if you were to ask me to, we did, we did our depositions. This is how long ago it was. We did the depositions three years ago, okay? Mm -hmm. And that... And we, it's been six years since this whole thing began. Uh, and I don't know if what I said, would say in court today would be exactly identical to the deposition. So I'm, we're telling him to get us a copy of the deposition so we can read it, so we can remember exactly what we said. Because Mueller would, hmm? Mueller would put you in jail. You're, you're, no, you're no better than uh, some of those Republicans well, that are sitting in uh, well, uh, no, solitary it's, confinement. It, it's not that I don't know the truth and I don't know what really happened and that I, for the most part I can probably tell you. But there may be certain facts <clears> and stuff that I would omit at this point because uh, it's, you know, it, the more it's distant reasonable. a situation happened ago, the long, more it takes for you to remember it. So stuff that you might have said three years ago is probably more real than what you would come up with today, is what I'm saying. Yeah, don't answer anything until you look at your attorney and, you know, uh, whisper to him, what did I say? I, 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 I'm, I'm sure that he will tell me that. Coach, you yeah. Know. Um, but, you know, I mean, what do, what do I have to say? I mean, you know, we rented this apartment. We were told it was a, we signed a lease. He signed as a landlord. We signed as a tenant. Case closed. Yeah. You know, you can bring in anybody you want to, like the re, her, his realtor. It may come into court and say, well, they knew it was a, a sublet. Well, then why didn't we get a sublet? Why didn't we? Why did we sign a lease? You know, why was it for three years instead of two years? Because sublets aren't three years. Right. You yeah. know, and um, we even have a note from uh, our real estate broker who stated that, uh, uh, from our real estate broker, who, who writes that uh, uh, we're going to have a meeting where you're going to sign the papers and the owner will be there. Uh, wow. Or he wrote a letter. He wrote a letter to this other realtor and said, and uh, we understand the owners will be there and blah, 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 blah. So even our, our guy thought that he was a... Uh, uh, An a, owner. A, a, the a owner. landlord. Yeah. So, you oh. know, I mean, oh. it, 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 it's just so much in our favor. Do you see Jeff? Huh? Do you see yeah. Jeff? Do I see Jeff? Oh, Jeff. Yes, Jeff. 
So I want to know if you're going to wear a yarmulke when you go to court. Oh, oh because of the landlords? Well, good idea. For, because of the landlords. Yeah, throw them off their game. You know, cause wear that Chinese hat. No, they'll all show up with their yarmulkes, so I should have my yarmulke. Right. That's right. Yeah. Uh, yeah, maybe I should grow. So, pay, maybe I should grow payas before then. You know. Yeah, lots of luck. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, a lot like Bill Clinton. You could just. I do not recall. I do not recall. Well, I, I mean, do not recall. You know, I I don't I think do there's recall. much they can get on us. You know, I they mean, they have the DNA. We're, we're we're the innocent parties here. Rush. The other two can fight it out. Most of most of it's going to be the fight between the landlord and this guy, not this guy and us. Mm -hmm. But you know, the outcome is going to include us, and so we have to make sure that we do okay. You know, I'm I'm sure your attorney is going to pre-plan this discussion. Right? Oh well, I mean, we're having a meeting with him. I think yeah. next week and then the week afterwards, just beforehand. You know, so say, we're here's have, what to say and here's what not to say. Yeah. Well, I mean, there's not much we don't have to say. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, the truth is what the truth is, you know. And um, uh, he also listed that he wanted back. He wanted ba he li made a list of all the things in the apartment that he would want back. And they included all the light sconces in the apartment. Once you well, install look, look, something look, permanently. Yeah. yeah. It belongs to the apartment. That's you what know, a light. That's uh, that's what carpet, I've been told. Anything. That's yeah. what I've been told. Yeah. But anyway, he listed all these things, and I'm going. If we gave him back all these all these sconces and all these things that he wants, there would be nothing in the apartment. There'd be no lights. I wouldn't have any lights here. The light. I have a light in back of me here. That would, you know. Plus the fact that he replaced those lights, other lights with those lights. Okay, put the old ones back in. You don't have right. them. Fuck you. You know, that's he not going to get him. He can't get him. He can't get him. One, 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 once you have, and then, but he wrote in that he said, and uh, they are they are responsible to get them back to me. The the Schwarzmans know that. We're made aware of that. I went to my lawyer. I said I wasn't made aware of it. We didn't sign any papers about it. You know? Was it in your lease? No. Then our lease you're was not aware you know, of. It. You know, our lease was was one of these boilerplate leases you buy. Mm -hmm. You know, at a stationery store, you know, yeah. and 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 uh, nothing was crossed out or anything. It was just one of those, and it was a lease. What is all that noise? <laughs> Ice cubes. Oh, sorry. I'm using one of these uh, mics that I don't like. The ones that pick up sound from everywhere. Mm. Dynamics. Any, any, it was ice. Anyway, um, we. Uh, uh, but you know, so uh, you know, I mean, it, it, it's just it. it I, I, I don't see we're going to have a real problem here, you know. Um, uh, but I do see that there's going to be a big fight between the landlord and, and this guy. Uh, and we're kind of like the orphan children, you know, the children of a divorced couple who are sitting there and watching mom and dad fight, you know. Possession is nine-tenths of the law. You're in the possession of the unit, and that's a pretty good place to be. Yeah. And, you know, I mean, he wants his old television set back. Happy to give him to it. That, that thing is a piece of shit, you know. Uh, uh, in fact, I, I think we had replaced... Tell him to pick it up. By the time we had the, the deposition, we had replaced the television set with another television set, and we mentioned that, and we said we saved the old one because that television set really sucks. And he looked at us and gave us a dirty look, like... No, that's state of the art. Yeah, it was state of the art in two thousand three. Tell him you know. he can have it when he delivers the check for your uh, triple damages and your uh, exactly. attorney's fees. Well, that's what happens since we're going to court. If we didn't go to court, the attorney fees would have to be negotiated. In a yeah. court of law like this, they're assumed. Okay. The winner gets. Yeah. The, yeah. Yeah. Or the let's put it this way. The, yeah, the winner. I don't think there are any winners or losers here, you know. Uh, but it it and it's it's going to keep going on because the landlords are going to lose to a certain extent, and then they're going to go and appeal the thing, and that's going to go on for another two years and another fifty thousand dollars, you know. And it's a matter of wait, somebody you're waiting for somebody to blink, you know. And I I I, I don't know if I were the landlord, I would try and settle. Okay. Well. They figure, hey, I got two people that are close to 80, 
how much longer can they live? Well, they got a you point. Know? Got a good point there. You know, maybe they'll carry them out in a bag and we can rent this place. <laughs> yeah, good. I'm going to get a lease for 10 so, years. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it's, yeah. Right. What were you going to say, Jeff? I said Phil had a good answer. Yeah. A good question. They could just wait us out. You know? Yeah. That's what they've been doing. Well, we'll, we'll see what happens. But anyway, that, we, that's coming up. So. Uh, Just tell I, him your I, mother lived to be 116. I might be off the air. For, <laughs> I might be off the air for two nights because we have to be to court early. And it's going to be a three-day trial. Wow. You know, I mean, hell. Thirty grand. Oh, so oh, oh easily, easily. Yeah. yeah. You know. So yes. what happens if they tell you you have to leave this week? They can't tell them that. That's not going to happen. My, my, my lawyer feels there's no way we're going to get thrown out of this apartment. It's just a question. Really, the big question here is the terms. Uh, and he f believes that based upon rent stabilization and the, what the things they didn't do to maintain rates, rent stabilization, that we should be able to move into this apartment, start paying rent on this apartment. He said if, if everything went right, it would be $500 a month. But he sees that he probably will be able to get a rent for us of about a thousand a month. Mm. Okay, because these guys didn't register it as rent stabilized, as rent stabilized, and that uh, that that uh, that was uh, in and of itself a, a major problem. Uh, let me see here. I'm gotta gotta see where I'm gonna put uh, Patrick. 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 Uh, you need uh, bigger. Yeah, I need more. Uh, let me see. Put him in the uh, handicap parking spot. Yeah, put him in the handicap. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. Hold on a second. There we go. Okay, so I got to put way, him. Congratulations on your Packers. Yeah, he's coming on to gloat. Yeah? Well, uh, no. It was a shitty game. There is not to be proud for that Parker. <laughs> yeah. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. I'll get you, I, I, I'll get you in here, Darth Pat. Hold on a moment. Here we go. Okay, transition. Padam. There he is. Okay. Yeah, uh, the, the offense seemed to believe that sacks on a third down is a good thing to allow. So, no. <laughs> that was a shitty game. Fuck that game. At least we. <laughs> yeah, a division win is a division win. You know, earlier we had very few people watching, and now we have more people watching than normally watch. Go figure. Yeah. The game's over. What game? The Bears-Packer game. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, okay. You know, because the other thing I was thinking is, uh, no, it couldn't be the tennis because Serena already played tonight. And she... It, it, the opening in the NFL tonight. Yes, yeah, first game of the oh, year. Oh, okay. So that's what my problem was. Well, welcome to all you people who suddenly decided to watch our little uh, program uh, welcome to Sports Talk, and uh, here's Josh. <laughs> Brought to you by these people, and then these people, and then these people, and then these people, and then these people, and we'll be right back. Right after we hear a word <laughs> from these people. That would be Sports Talk. Yeah. Sports Talk is basically like the little break in between the commercials. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and God forbid it be on a station that does news twice an hour. On the on the top of the hour and the bottom of the hour, you actually get about eight minutes of sports talk and you know the well, other I, I, fucking fifty two minutes of commercials I, I, and fucking news. I told you about the time that I did the last show I ever did on radio was the W O R here in New York, and uh, 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 Albert was my producer for that show, and hmm. I just went on for three hours, and he said we take commercial breaks and blah 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 blah. Well, we go into a commercial break. And it goes on, and it yeah. goes on, and it go and I finally right. said to I said to Albert I said, how long is this commercial break? He says, oh it's seven yeah, it's seven minutes. <laughs> I said, when's the how much time do I have to talk before the next commercial break? He said about seven minutes. <laughs> and then how long's the next one? He said about seven minutes. You know, and I went, Jesus Christ! Yeah. I said, next time we go into a break, uh, I think I'm going to go home. Have lunch and come back. Yeah. Okay. Because really, when you were through doing it, it was maybe like, you know, 25 wow. minutes a show an hour, and that was right. it. Yeah. 
You know, and oh, then we broke for news. Yeah, that was the other part. We broke for news. Yeah, and the, then, the top and bottom of the hour, you know, if it's, you know, uh, that's the way most everybody does it. Yeah, this this is why I gladly paid for Sirius Radio for many years, because it's worth the very little bit of money that it takes to pay it each year to not have to put up that kind of shit. Well, you had to put up with some commercials. You know, we were right, ran, but we, it's not nearly the way that it is. We ran you know. eight minutes worth of commercials an hour, I think, is what we did, and then we oh, had a three oh, minute, so a three minute newscast. Bad. Yeah, that wasn't bad. I've been listening to like Fox Radio and uh, a few other things on Sirius, and there's a million commercials. Uh, but no, but those, but Fox is it, Fox isn't Sirius. Uh, Fox is. Fox Radio on Sirius on yeah. Sirius, and so they're yeah. they're, yeah. they're running their commercials in there. Yeah, sometimes yeah. I listen to a radio station in New York, Z100, and a few other things. But yeah, I, I get those. Yeah, but I mean, if it's a, if it's a commercial outfit that's simply being aired on yeah. uh, on a simulcast, yeah, of yeah. yeah simulcast, yeah. they're going to run as many commercials as they can. That's the trouble with radio now; is they run so many commercials. Uh, what happened with me in San Francisco, and I was doing my, my show, and this was back in, uh, in the 90s, uh, I, I didn't pay much attention to the commercial breaks because we ran all the commercial breaks from another studio. I would simply say, we'll be back after this, and then we'd go into a commercial break. And I finally said, how much time do we have, love? And they said, another two minutes. Whatever. And I, I never thought about it. I just did, all I cared about was coming back on and being funny or whatever. And all of a sudden, one day, I said, you know, these commercial breaks seem to be awfully long lately. And as the years had gone on, they kept putting in, well, let's run another minute worth of commercials an hour. Let's run another yeah. minute's worth. I said, so I said to my the person who was running the commercials, I said, how many minutes of commercials are we running an hour? He said, 21. <laughs> I said, 21 minutes of commercials? I hadn't realized that. No wonder I'm, I, I'm losing listeners. You that know? wasn't the ones that you would read. Uh, you know, well, I had the uh, ones I read. Because 21 plus what you read. No, it was, it was, no? those were included. It was inclusive? It, yeah, those were no. inclusive. But 21, I think it got up to 22, sometimes 23 minutes. And I went, why do you, do you expect anybody to stick with this program with that many commercials? You know? And yet they do it. Now, what? I had a theory, and, and nobody ever listened to me. Years ago, I used to know a guy. His name was Walter Keene. He was a painter. He did the paintings with the kids with the big eyes. In fact, they made a movie about them. He and his wife, Margaret, one night they, she would do a painting, and the next night he would do a painting, and then the next night he would do a painting, and the next night she'd do a painting. And they do about uh, seven paintings a week, <laughs> right? And then they turn around and sell them for like 10 grand a piece, all right? So um, I said to him, I said, Walter, I said, what happens if the paintings start selling faster than you can paint them? And he says, I simply raise the price. I don't raise the output. And I said, I, I carried that with me because he had been in real estate, and that was his idea. You know, if a house is, you know, if there's a large clamor for a house, you sell it for more. And... He said, if I raise the prices on the paintings, the, the uh, what do you call it, the, the uh, demand. demand for them goes down. But I still make the same, uh, the, um, I still make more money. Uh, and so I, I brought this with me to, uh, uh, to, to radio, and I said, look, you know, I said, why don't we run this, uh, f maybe like, you know, eight commercials an hour. And they went, well, we can't do that because they, they cost us much. What, what is all that noise? Who's making all that noise? That's me. I'm sorry. I didn't know this mic was doing that. I'll just hang up. Yeah. No, just, um, just mute. Mute. Yeah, mute. Guys. That's why the mute is there. Um, so anyway, um, I, I, I said, look, why don't you do what, what this guy Walter Keene did? You have eight commercials, and if people want my show like crazy, you just keep raising, you charge more for each commercial, and you use as your logic, hey, you're not being gangbanged in with a bunch of other advertisers. How does that work with the rate card? Well, no, uh, but, but what you would do is you would say there are eight availabilities an hour, 
And then if the demand got higher, you'd raise the price on them. You know? In other words, you, you wouldn't raise the number of spots you were running. You would r raise the price. But nobody could get with that concept. They said, that's not the way we sell time in radio. And I said, well, you know, it's time to change because I don't think people are going to stick with radio much longer if they're going to hear these many commercials. And yeah, as sure. it turns out, they're not. You know, they, they want their satellite radio where there are less commercials. Yeah, you know, I mean, it's worth the 30 40 bucks I pay a month for. I got like three or four different subscriptions. So, I mean, I, I pay some whatever, but yeah, it's, it's worth every penny. <laughs> and I, I, just, yeah. I just never saw that as being a, a good idea of, of saying, well, you know, we want to make more money off of you, so let's run 20 commercials an hour. Well, what you're doing is you're also... You're ruining the pace of my show. You're ruining. You're giving people an excuse to leave listening to it. You know, and yeah, no one's fucking listening to them. I mean, you know, that's the that's the real thing about well, it is no one's listening to that shit. They're flipping around looking for if, something else because they know it's going to be five minutes. If I'm an advertiser and you want to sell me time, and you're putting me in a cluster with seven other commercials, let's say eight commercials. I mean. Come on, you know, if you have a seven-minute commercial break, that conceivably could be 14 commercials, okay, 30-second commercials. And you've got me in the middle. I want to pay less because I, I'm not getting the bang I'm going to get if unless I'm the first commercial or the last commercial. Right. But, no, they charge the same for all of them. Um, and uh, I, I, on TV, I'll get to you in a second, Phil. On TV, I see something now they never would have done years ago on television. I see a car commercial followed by another car commercial. Different company. And from a different yeah. company. Not from, it's not like two Chrysler products or two GM products. They never would have done that in the old days. A Volvo commercial followed by a Mercedes-Benz. If I were Mercedes Benz or Volvo, I'd tell you, go fuck yourself. I, unless you keep me away from those other car commercials, I'm not buying time on your network. But Plus, they do a lot of double commercials. They do, they'll do do a commercial and then put a commercial, another company's commercial on and then put the same company back on. Oh, I've, yeah. se I've seen it where they run the same commercial over again. Yeah. yeah. But, yeah. I, but I can see the logic in that in a way. because, yeah, you, it's, because it's, it's pounding. Yeah, it's pounding. Didn't you... Tell me a long time ago that the radio audience uh, uh, switched every 15 minutes. Uh, that you know that it was like you're playing to a 15 minute segment. So they get their seven commercials or their seven minutes of commercials, and uh, the rest of the 15 minutes okay. is is well, you. Let me explain to you that the ratings are by the quarter hour. What's your average quarter hour? So the, th the, the way they do things in radio, they used to do them, I don't know if they're still doing it this way, is you would sweep the quarter hour. In other words, you wouldn't run commercials, you would run music or programming between about 13 minutes past and 18 minutes past. Or w w in other words, you would sweep the quarter hours with programming. And that way, if people listen to you in one quarter for two minutes, and then listen to you in another quarter for two minutes, you got credit for two quarters. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. So there was that science going uh, in it. I never played any of that science. It drove them nuts. I just went, hey, you know, I'll break for commercials when it's time to break for commercials, you know? Well, you knew about it because you told, you told me yeah, about it. Yeah, but it wasn't like I would break for commercial at a certain time because they told me I had to break for commercials at a yeah. certain time. I just want to do a radio show, fucking entertainment. I want to make people laugh in the morning, make them feel good about going to work instead of hate going to work, you know? Uh, but it, 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 becomes, it becomes very difficult to, to do that these days, you know? So, uh, what the hell? What the fuck? You know, I, I feel like I'm living in a, in, a, in a world I didn't invent. Where are we? So, oh, yes, uh, Jeff, I see your hand up. Yeah, so uh, you were talking about somebody who, who used to draw big eyes, right? Yeah, uh, uh, Walter Keene. Was this, is this the same kind of stuff? Well, that's, that's, a, that's a ripoff of Walter Keene. That's what I think it is, yeah. Let me see here. Let me see if I can. I, I, I don't know. You guys won't be able to see this, but uh, yeah. 
Uh, let me see here. Let me get the. Hold on a second. These uh, are not as big. Walter Keane. Let's see here. Oops. That was Walter. a movie about, about he, him. Yeah, yeah, there was. Uh, and about how he kind of, they kind of made it like he ripped off his wife. Yeah. Uh, but he really, he really didn't. You know, I mean, they, they did this together. Uh, Walter Keane. K E A N E. Okay, Walter Keen paintings. Okay, let me see here if I uh, if I can get you a uh, uh, um, uh, an example of Walter mm. Keen here. Hold on a second. Uh, it's having I'm having problems with that. It's somebody. Jeff, sick. that thing on inclusion didn't have anybody with a yarmulke. <laughs> I didn't write it. It's a friend of mine who did it. And, yeah. No Jews allowed. No, I don't think so. Uh, no, I can't. I can't get it for you. I, I wish I could. But her sister did the the graphics. Um, yeah. And when you said that uh, big eyes, I go, I think they ripped it off. They they, yeah. they used. Uh, well, let me see here. Cancel. Open. Let me see. Nah, I can't. I can't get to it. It, it's, yeah. it's too much. It's too much crap now. When you go to images on uh, on Google, to get anything, it's uh, terrible. It's okay. terrible. Well, anyway, uh, I was having the same trouble getting th that maps of. Uh, of, of you you Trump. can't even read news articles anymore on uh, on on the internet because they have all these pop ups that keep coming on, wanting you to subscribe to their particular newspaper or uh and 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 they're they, they you can't get rid of them you know they just keep coming and that's only makes, for people who watch trump stuff ah uh, is, is that <laughs> an internet thing just to piss us off yeah yeah it, really yeah trump's getting paid for that yeah ah. yeah, yeah. How, how how you doing ray you got yourself working now ray have you got your stuff working Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, no, this is one of the lights on my desk doesn't work. <laughs> well, it's a, that's a minor problem. No, I know that's why my but my, my why my face is all washed out. It looks posterized almost. Yeah. I, know, yeah. I don't know what the hell's going on. Well, I think it's because there's not enough light. Either that, or you can go in and 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 later on when we're not on, adjust your camera. Yeah, put, I, put, I've put tried. Put a light underneath your chin. Yeah. <laughs> That's the horror, uh, you know. No, no, they do yeah. that on television. You know, the, a lot of the desks for the anchors actually have lights in them to mm -hmm. light. Yeah. The oh, to cut the shadow. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, but if you put the light underneath and it's the only light, then oh, it looks oh, like. Then it know. looks like, like Ray you does know. right now. Yeah. There we go. There's <laughs> there's Ray with his. Uh, yeah. <laughs> that, yes. His horror lights. So what's new, Ray? Uh, nothing really. Nothing. Give us a love letter. Yeah, give us a love letter. Yeah. Just one. Is it is it the same love letters whenever they do love letters? Or is yeah. it or is it a whole bunch of new love letters? No, it's the same one from the late eighties or whatever that was. Yeah, oh I yeah. see. It's the same play. And it has a storyline to it, basically. Yeah, you just following these people through their lives as they write letters to each other but never really get together till they're older yeah and then and then one of them croaks it's kind of like people end sitting at dinner it, it, it pretty much uh, if i'm not other. mistaken it pretty much uh, uh has been uh, a very successful play in that as i said last night uh you can get almost anybody to do them for like a couple of nights or something like that and they just yeah, read them it's a big star vehicle you know, yeah. They, I mean, even I think Brian Dunahy and Faye Dun and Faye Dunaway did it recently. Yeah, Dunahy yeah. and Dunaway. Da -da -da, yeah. Da -da -da. How old <laughs> is Faye Dunaway now? Huh? In her seventies somewhere. Yeah. Uh, Why do I have you in two things here? I don't. I don't uh, need you in that one. So I, I oh, get yeah. rid of you. Yeah. Oh yeah. Look at me. Yeah. Wow. I got. I got. You, I got you in two of them. Here. Let me get rid of you in. Maybe I need a new camera. This thing's old. He's in stereo. Uh, 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 let me see here. Let me, uh, bah, 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 let me uh, go there. There we go. We got rid of one of you. Okay. So, um, 
Hey, Phil, I forgot my brother and I had been on that boat a whole bunch of times together. Really? Yeah. My brother, he reminded me. Uh, Yesterday well, I saw my brother. Did you hear it was, uh, they think it, it was uh, uh, lithium batteries exploded. From the cell phones? No. Yeah, wow. uh, uh, all oh. the dive, you know, we charge our batteries uh, on the on the seats uh, where people would sit overnight oh, right. uh, uh, in the in the lounge area. Yeah. And uh, that's where all the plugs were. So, you know, you might have all these chargers with 10 batteries, 12 batteries charging up and, you know, and you got 34 people. You got a lot of batteries out there. So, Why don't we come up with something better than ion lithium batteries? You know, well, because that's what they were saying on the news, and they were mistakenly saying it was from the cell phones. And I, I was like, no, I it's don't not think the so. cell phones. It's from the uh, dive equipment. You don't get cell service out there. Yeah, I know. That's why I want. I wanted to call them and tell them. That I don't think it's the phones. But. Yeah, uh, because I, you know, I've been on that boat three times for a total of ten nights, yeah. and uh, there's no cell service. No, I know. Well, yeah. so so what did they think it was? Because the last I heard, they thought it was maybe an oxygen leak. Uh, that's what I thought it was, but it, it, they're saying it was lithium-ion batteries. I bet it was the batteries. Exploded. Yeah, it could be because they get warm, and that you know you get a bunch of them sitting on a seat. And who knows? I'm always telling my daughter to, you know, put it on a, uh, a, you know, a tray or something. She's always got her, you know, doing her Fortnite with her apple sitting in a blanket, and I'm always telling her get it ventilated because they work hard when uh, they're doing that stuff. And this, those batteries. This is what one of those chargers look like. Yeah, yeah. This this holds eight, and yeah, uh, they get warm. Yeah, they can. Uh, and you know the reason why it's got my name on it? So they because can blame you. On, on that boat, I, you know, so you don't mix it up with other people. Yeah, and they can blame you. <laughs> yeah, but, yeah, but, but uh, you know, I mean, uh, the point is that didn't they realize the danger in this? I mean. Yeah. Been doing it for years. Well, and the thing is the lithium batteries have been, they've been, uh, They've been scrutinized over the last few years. Like when I was just getting out of work, we were going through a lot of lithium battery training, even to put them on airplanes. You yeah. had to go through uh, training to ship them. And, you know, I've got good quality ones. They're called E-loops. And, uh, you know, they, they're supposed to It really doesn't matter. Yeah, but you know what happens if the batteries uh, start touching one another, they get extremely hot. That's I had true. two that I took out and put in my pant pocket, and I almost burned my leg. Yep. Uh, they, wow. that, Am I that sure? Plus, yeah, uh, sure. When we were shipping them in devices, you could only ship one in a device, yeah. and then you had to ship the other batteries separately. Wow. Yeah, it's, it's, especially uh, if they were going on an aircraft. Hmm. Yeah, I got a feeling it's not going to be good. Uh, you know, you're going to have to use like regular batteries that you have to throw away, disposables. Well, you know, I mean, uh, anything that's safe. I mean, safer. You know, yeah, safer. Yeah. Than, you, well, it's the chemical reaction in the lithium. Uh, well, how does What's it have problem? a reaction? Is it? Is it because, yeah, you know. I, I don't know the science behind it, but they say that the, the, the lithium gets warm with the chemical reaction when it's charging. Wow. Yeah. <clears throat> That's yeah. that's what the problem is with that particular battery. And if you don't, if you're using a cheap one, they short inside and that sort of thing. You want to use good quality batteries and a good quality charger. Yeah. yeah. If you buy the well, cheap stuff, you're going to pay for it. That's why those those hover boards were going up and everything yeah. else. Yeah. Well, I, I thought it was just the Chinese. Batteries. Yeah. We're, we have our music running, and I want to thank way. everybody. First of all, I want to thank Ray twice because we had him in there twice, and I didn't even <laughs> notice it for a while. Uh, and uh, bye, Ray. Bye, Ray. Bye, Ray. Bye, Ray. Uh, bye, bye. Call us again. Call us again. Uh, and actually, you, whatever lighting you're using right now, you look terrific. Yeah. 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 Right? I just adjusted it. Yeah. That's that's your movie star look. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> Phil, make up, make thank up. you so much. Josh, You're thank very welcome. you. Charlie, great to have you here tonight. Jeff as well. Kevin, uh, yep. Ray, Ray, and uh, um, uh, 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 Darth Pat, <laughs> Patrick. Thank you so much. Uh, why don't you all give a big wave goodbye so they can wave goodbye back at you, okay? There they go, ladies and gentlemen, the citizen panel. Uh, and uh, I, uh, we can't see you, Phil. Uh, it's, uh, we're already off that and on to me. 
Uh, but let me hang up on everybody here because Jack Bishop, who's next with the intersection, uh, needs to use those same phones, uh, and you should give him a call so he can use them as well. I'm Alex Bennett. That's it for tonight. Good having you on board. We'll be back again tomorrow night for our last show of the week. Uh, right after Damian Chaplin does the intersection, uh, we'll be here at 10 o'clock. He'll be here at 930 same time, same station in life. In the meantime, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Bye-bye, everybody.